Hi everyone, welcome back. Today I'm going to be making a cover for a journal. Now I haven't finished the pages of the journal but I still want to do the cover. So I've pulled out some lace and also some of the cell wedges with the writing on them because I thought that might look nice. I also have some brown leather. This was a piece left over when my husband got his bag repaired and I thought that I could use some of it. I'm not sure if he'll need it again, but I'm going to use it anyway. This is the book I'm going to be covering because it's the right height and it's white, like it's bigger than the pages that I'm going to do. And I'll be working on that journal again in, you know, in the next week or so, so you'll see it pop up. So this is an old woodwork book. And what I like about it is the back. So I like the pages as well. They're really nice. I'm not sure if I'll use any of those in the journal that I'm doing because they're a bit big. The journal's going to be slightly smaller than the cover. But I like this. It's got all the stamps in it. And you can see they're back in 1955 that it was sort of borrowed around 1953. So from the Brisbane School of Arts and the back of it's nice too. Came from the Lending Library. So it's... um. It's pretty old now, it's, you know, pushing, you know, mid, late 60s, 70s. I shouldn't say it's pretty old because I'm in my early 60s. But anyway, you get the message. I'm not going to do a cover for the back. I'm only going to do the cover for the front. Now, how I'm going to attach that and create a spine, I haven't yet decided. So maybe I should decide that now. Or maybe I'll just put the leather around the back and over the spine because it'll make a good spine and then over the front and it can actually come right over the front I don't mind although there's a nice little pocket in there hmm okay I have to think about whether or not I want it to come over the front so I will cut it bigger than I need and in fact I might even cut it slightly bigger than that again because I think if I sew things on, so the plan is to sew strips of this onto it, if I do that it may well shrink because it's a leather, so I'm really not sure, but if I give myself a generous amount to wrap around the spine, probably need about, no I don't want to go further than that do I, let's try it on the back, so I probably want to only come to here with that and then give myself enough to come around the front as well. I'm try and cut it so it's leaving some leather in case husband has to get the bag fixed again. But we'll see. I don't want it to go over the top edges though. So I can push it right down. In fact what I might do is I might actually draw on it. Hmm, I guess I can draw on it and then cut slightly inside the lines. I think that's good. I need to get it straight. Okay, so then if I push it up a bit, I can bring it inside those lines. And see, oh, I didn't cut this way. It's really, really soft. I know that. And the line is giving me a fairly straight edge to work on when I'm cutting it, so that's good. And this will go over the top of this and then around this edge. See already it seems to have shrunk somewhat from when I cut it. Maybe it's this way. So this is going to then get stuck onto the front. So all of this will be decorated and I want my strips to run horizontally. So I think this should be pretty easy. Just a matter of putting the strips on and then sewing them on. Now if I start from the bottom and I might grab a piece of lace to start with then I can sew up. Now I also wanted to see 
because I don't want to sew the edge of the fabric off because I do that I'm going to be sewing on top of my numbers but if I sew and cover the one below you won't see that stitching so that's kind of what I think the plan will be let me just test a couple of them before I move on because not all of these strips have numbers and things on them but a fair few do and I thought maybe like a piece of lace might also look quite good so let's grab some a couple of bits of lace now and see if this will work then I'll do something like this piece of ruler ribbon and maybe I can then go for like a piece like this so I'll cut that down somewhat and I do also have some lace I've also got this I think this is I've got a couple of these I think this is the one I've not used any of yet because I want to create some texture otherwise it's going to be very flat seeing if I can visualize how that's going to look I might go and do some sewing and see if I'm happy with that so this is how I've gone so far I've just put some of those strips down and thought I'd stop and give you a look progress because I think that that is looking quite good so I've just overlapped them I haven't sewn them down so you can still see the fabric above but I actually don't mind that I wish I'd got this one slightly higher on this side but that's not going to change I might have to unpick it and raise it up the other thing I wanted to put on here was like a couple of other strips that I can put over the top I'm not sure where I'm going to put them yet I think I want a like a cover you know journal thing to put up here I might stamp in this one I've also got this little bit of felt in fact, I've got a few little skinny bits I might put on here this one here put this one up here maybe maybe I might put this one down the bottom actually so that will fill up that whole gap down there put this little one up here and I'm going to lay that on top of something so I might grab another piece of lace or something I've got this bit that's just sitting here on the table I can just use as a sample and see if I can get that like if that went all the way across with this on top of it that might look good the other thing that I could put something like this down here too yeah so if I put some other sort of bits on it not necessarily decorative bits like this just over the top in some spots so that it looks a bit more junky rather than just strips of lace just looking at that I think I need something further over here if I did do that up there then I would need something further over here so maybe like here or maybe I can put this in the center and then do something up here that can go back up there I think that's a bit too much down here that's a bit thick that lace I think and I could put like this on top of that it doesn't have to be exactly on one side I think that's looking quite good actually what else have I got in here I don't think I want to introduce any red I've got another one of this sort of black stitching 
you I like that red one up there with the red white and free so these come from quilts that I've made so I can tell you now this one is on my bed this whimsy one that's also part of that that's the same fabric this one here is a piece I didn't actually make a quilt out of that but I made a cushion this one here is from another cushion and it's actually a sewing themed cushion and this one I made for my son-in-law it's an American one because he's American so I think that this is looking much better if I do that sort of thing obviously I need to fill in the gaps but I'm pretty happy with this so far just picking up the bits of lace that are lying around my table if you're wondering what I'm doing I'm randomly got bits of lace on my table so I thought that I could just put some things down on here. Wish that bit of lace was a bit longer, but I can make, I can cut another piece. I'm just sort of looking at what it might look like, the end product. I don't need that, that's a bit much. I think that's pretty good. And I have to fill in the gaps. I've got some more of that other strip fabric to fill the gaps in, but something like that and then with the word up here, just have to make sure that's on the right spot in the book. I might stamp that. Actually, I'll get a stamp out and put something on that so it's just not a piece of fabric sewn, but it's actually like a title for the journal. So far, so good. I think I'll keep going. All right, I've finished that now and I've just show you what I've done. I'll just cut some threads off first got some that I've got on the back and just making sure it's not going to catch anywhere as I go through and stick it on so I've just sewn those bits on that I talked about now this piece here underneath was quite long but I've put that and the other piece of lace over the top I've got this little label on here a little bit crooked I've also put some lace down the bottom here and those bits that I talked about putting it on top. So I think that that looks okay. I thought I had one more piece that was on top as well. Uh, no, there it is there. Yep, okay. So that's about it in terms of sewing this, but I do want to go through and I want to put a stamp on this for a start or well, maybe I'll stick it on first so here's my book I'm just checking because it's a bit crooked on the edge so I just trim this I think that I need to trim it down another tiny little bit too because it's going to be a little bit too big I'm just worried when I put the glue on it that it might start shrinking and then that's going to be an issue let me trim a tiny bit off it was pretty easy to sew I haven't really sewn on leather before but it didn't seem to make a whole be a whole problem for me I was just going to put it on with some Helmers 450 I think that will be the best thing to put it on with I really don't think it will come off because the Helmers is pretty good at sticking things and it's also good on fabric I don't know about leather I haven't stuck leather with it before. That leather's just another type of, you know, fabric if you like, or a, a textile, so it should be okay. I don't mind that this bit's a bit higher than the page, than the actual book. I quite like how it looks on the spine too. Now I haven't cut the pages from the inside yet. I thought I would leave them on because it will give this some stability while it dries. Now to finish it off I've decided to use this which is from the Tim Holtz collection which is called Etc. CMS 302 if you're looking for it and I like this 15 cents. I think it will fit here. It's just going to go on the border and I'm probably only going to get one shot at this so I need to ink it up well I'm using archival ink in black soot I could use the jet black I have the, that in the bigger one but this one happened to be sitting in 
my bag of tricks right beside me now I don't think I'm going to get another shot so I'm hoping this will come out that's not too bad I knew it wouldn't go super dark and I don't think that I wanted it super dark but I like that so there is my journal cover and when I do the book or finish off the book I will put it in here I've got that part done but I need to finish it off so I hope you liked that now while I'm on I want to show you my latest haul from the online auction I did another online auction and I bought some more things well not that much I just bought magazines and I thought I'd give you a quick look at them because some of them are really interesting and I was I, once again you know I think I said last time you just don't know what you're going to get all you see is a picture and then you hope for the best so this is what I could see in the image that was on the auction and I bid on it so this is Women's Journal and it's from February 1947 and it's got, I just had a flip through when I came home, it's got really nice pictures and things in it. Look at these nice pictures of houses and you know bedrooms and all sorts of things in there, nice little black and white images. It's also got really nice ads. This is actually a short novel. Look at these beautiful faces. I'll be able to use those. Obviously I haven't gone through every page but there's some more of those little houses. It looks really nice. It's got lots of text. It's got little advertising things. Look at these nice ads. It's lovely. And even that's lovely. I could do something with that. I think I might pull it out and do some with the next video. Really nice pictures. That's an ad for Elizabeth Arden. <laughs> I was looking through some of it and I realised some of these things I haven't heard of in years. Not that I was around in 1947 but you know my mum always bought lots of magazines and things. Now this one here is from I think this is around the same era. I oh know this is June 18, 1958. It hasn't got a cover, it's got Princess Margaret on the front. But again, lots of things in there, I'm sure. This is Women and Home from November 57. Look at this lovely thing on the front cover. <laughs> it's really nice. And lots of, look, there you go, being a homemaker. I love all these old photos and lots of ads again really nice ads so I think what I might do is I might cut the ads out and put some of them into the shop because I think you know rather than just random I suppose I could just sell random bits of the magazine I mean I'm not going to be able to use all these so I'll have to put some into the shop and look at this nice little for the four to nine year old <laughs> Can you imagine the four to nine year olds of today wearing this? <laughs> oh, they're really nice. Beautiful pictures. And oh, bread making for beginners. There you go. And this one is my home. I think I'll turn them around. My home from, I think this one was October 1963, this one. So they're different things again similar sorts of stuff though know yourself <laughs> there's a quiz and oh my goodness <laughs> they're so funny when you look back really nice ads and things and that's just a separate page this one is a woman's weekly from 1979 so it's not that old but it's still surprising how things have changed in this sort of time frame at 41 years I know because my daughter was born in 79 and just looking at how things have changed is you know really amazing in 41 years so there's that one and then there's here we have another women's journal from February 59 these are actually quite thick and really nice inside them really good old-fashioned vintagey 
sorts of ads and oh look at that corset <laughs> some brands that don't exist anymore there's lots of recipes being adventurous and thrifty all at the one time oh there is something missing from there someone's cut something out look at that oh look at that hat <laughs> this is pretty and then this is no cover again and it is from I think it's a similar sort of age by the look of it I'm sure it had a thing on it somewhere where is it I think it has a oh yes March 1949 so again lovely old ads and lots of nice pictures there's some color ones too which is interesting but really nice pictures and advertising and things from that one and this is a newer one as well it's from 1980 so again not that old but it's still amazing how things have changed in that time frame and this one is another one from May of 47 and what I found really interesting about this one probably something that you know I have never seen in my lifetime and that is it talks about Princess Elizabeth of course that's now Queen Elizabeth and there's also this lovely old picture here of this is talking about the Edwardian curtsy pictures of horses and again these little these little different pictures this is same pictures I think Dorothy Black I think she must write a column look at these dresses I would wear dresses like that now and I'd wear dresses like this too look at them longer skirts Paris has thrown down the challenge for the return of elegance <laughs> that's beautiful so these are English magazines in the main and very interesting I'm sure to have a look right through them and I will put some into the online shop thank you to everyone who's ordered from my shop I really appreciate your support and um, hopefully I will get some more orders so keep an eye out for these because I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through and I'm going to find the ads and maybe trim them up and sell the ads or the pictures that are in here in um, I think some of these would be quite good for use, use in uh, junk journals especially these beautiful old dresses and things like that so that's it I hope you enjoyed the cover that I made and that you'll give it a go yourself because it is pretty easy and you'll see it again when I sew some signatures into it in another video later on thank you very much everyone and Thank you for your support. Thanks for watching. Cheers.